Okay, in this video we want to look at three important vectors associated with a vector definition of a curve R of t. So the first one is one that we've used before, which is the unit tangent vector. So we can get a tangent vector just by taking the derivative of the curve, but then we can turn it into a unit vector by dividing by its length. And so we'll call that the unit tangent vector capital T. Again, we've used this one before. And you might say, well, why do we really want a unit vector? Well, when you're thinking about a tangent, often all you want is the direction of the vector and not the magnitude. So turning it into a unit vector makes it nice and easy to work with. Now the next thing that we'll look at is the unit normal vector. So if you recall, the if you have a unit vector or really any vector valued function with a uh, constant size, then its derivative is <clears throat> orthogonal to itself. And so that means t prime has to be orthogonal to t. So we proved that earlier, um, which makes this t prime divided by the magnitude of t prime orthogonal to t as well. And so this normal vector is going to be orthogonal to this tangent vector. Okay, so if the unit tangent vector is giving you the instantaneous direction of a curve, then the unit normal vector is giving the direction at which the unit tangent vector is changing. Great, and then third we have the binormal vector. And the binormal vector, you can think geometrically as uh, the vector which is normal to the plane that is closest to containing the curve. So that's a little bit hard to see geometrically, but we'll look at a very simple case. Okay, so we'll look at a curve that's totally contained in this chalkboard. So maybe it looks something like this. And let's call this thing the, our curve R of T. Great, and now maybe we'll choose this point right here and we'll look at what would the tangent vector be, maybe the unit tangent vector, the unit normal vector, and then the binormal vector. So it's easy to see that the unit tangent vector is going to obviously be tangent to this curve. So we can draw that with this yellow arrow. So this would be the tangent vector. And then, like I said, the normal vector is the direction with which the tangent vector is changing. So notice this tangent vector is changing to point upwards as we go to the right. So our normal vector would be pointing in this direction. So that would be our normal vector. And then you might say, well, what about the binormal vector? So if you cross these two, we will get the binormal vector. And notice the binormal vector is going to be coming straight out of the board. So I won't draw that because it's kind of hard to draw when you have a plane curve going like this, but you can just visualize that the binormal vector is going straight out of the board. So in other words, if you were to write the equation of the chalkboard, its normal vector would be this binormal vector. So that means the binormal vector defines the plane that is containing this curve. And so obviously uh, not all curves stay in one plane. And so how you want to think about that is the binormal vector is defining the plane that is closest to, to, to containing the curve at this given point. Okay, now one more thing before we go into an example. You might say, well, here we have a unit vector, here we have a unit vector. Is the binormal vector a unit vector or do we need to turn it into a unit vector? And in fact, it's already a unit vector given that we are taking the cross product of two unit vectors that are orthogonal to each other. So I'll let you guys think about that, but there's this formula involving the cross product um, and the size of a cross product involving the sign. Okay, good. So I'm gonna clean up the board and then we're gonna go look at an example. Okay, so the example we wanna look at is the following. So let's find the unit tangent, the unit normal, and the binormal vector for this curve, cosine t in the i direction, sine t in the j direction, and t in the k direction. We might write it like that in terms of components that way as well, cosine comma sine comma t. Good, and if you recall from a previous video, this curve is actually a helix going up the z axis. So I won't draw that, but I'll let you look at that if you need to. Great. So now let's first find this tangent vector. Um, so that is going to be 
the derivative of our curve divided by the magnitude of that derivative. So we can write this derivative as follows. So this is going to be negative sine t comma cosine t comma one. And now finding the magnitude of a vector, we can just take the dot product of this with itself and then take the square root. So we've done a bunch of examples like this in previous videos, so I won't worry about that. So we have sine squared plus cosine squared plus one squared. So sine squared plus cosine squared is one, plus one is two. So here we have the square root of two. Okay, good. Now we can uh, simplify that down to negative 1 over root 2 sine of t, uh, 1 over root 2 cos t, and then 1 over root 2. So we've got something like that. Um, okay, good. So now let's go ahead and find the normal vector. So the normal vector is going to be the derivative of this tangent vector divided by the magnitude of that derivative. Okay, so that is going to give us negative 1 over root 2 uh, cosine t, taking the derivative of sine as cosine, and then we have negative 1 over root 2 sine t, and then finally we have 0 because the derivative of a constant is 0, and now we're going to divide that by the magnitude. I won't labor that, but we're going to get 1 half cosine squared plus 1 half sine squared. That's going to give us 1 half, so we have the square root of 1 half in the denominator. But what's nice about that is that this 1 over root 2 uh, cancels this square root of 1 half in the denominator. So we get something like that, and notice that this gives us the normal vector, uh, negative cos t, uh, negative sine t, comma, zero. Great. So I'll uh, clean up the board, I'll move these up to here, and then we can calculate the binormal vector. Okay, good. So we've got our tangent vector, which is given by this vector, our normal vector, which we also calculated on the previous board. So now let's find our binormal vector. So this is going to be our tangent vector cross our normal vector. So we'll use the determinant of a three by three matrix version of the cross product. Okay, so our first row will be i, j, and k, those unit basis vectors. And then we have minus one over root two sine t here, one over root two cos t here, and then one over root two, uh, just the number there. Okay, great. And then over here we have uh, minus cos t, minus sine t, and then the number zero. Okay, good. So now let's expand about the first row and the first column. So that's going to give us the ith component, in other words, the first component of this after taking this two by two determinant. So notice we get one over root two cosine times zero minus one over root two times negative sine. So that's gonna give us one over root two times sine. The minus signs cancel. Okay, good. So now we're gonna expand by the first row and the second column and then do that two by two determinant. So notice that is gonna cancel. And then we're gonna have minus one over root two times negative cosine um, built into the determinant, but we have an extra minus sign from the definition of the uh, determinant since we're expanding by this term right here. So we have three minus signs all together. That's going to give us one over root two cosine t, and that is negative. Okay, so let's reiterate why that's negative. So we have this first minus sign here. We have a second minus sign because we're doing a, d, minus b, c. And we have a third minus sign because we're expanding about this entry right here in the determinant. Okay, good. And then now finally we'll expand by the first row and the third column leaving us that two by two determinant. So notice that's gonna give us one over root two times sine squared plus one over root two times cosine squared. Notice the minus signs cancel. So one over root two sine squared times one over root two cosine squared, well that's just gonna be one over the square root of two because cosine squared plus sine squared is one. And that is our binormal vector.
Okay, good. So now uh, I think this is a good place to stop this video. In the next video, we'll talk about a couple of planes associated with a curve. Okay, good.